Welcome to Desert Dragon Gaming. This is Jake here with my review of South Park's The Fracture Bowl on PlayStation 4. So, just to get ahead of it now, please like and subscribe below. Uh, leave some comments and let me know what I'm doing. I'm trying to be a little more structured with the format of my reviews before I kind of was kind of talking off the cuff. I have a little bit more of a layout of what I want to do this time. So, hopefully this is a little better and keep comments coming. Let me know what I can improve, what you liked about what I did, what you didn't like. Uh... That being said, let's get to the review. Uh, I'm going to start off with graphics. So, if you played the Stick of Truth, you have uh, know what the look of the Fracture Ball Hole is. And I think that goes into the impact of the whole game, and I get, I'll get to that later. Um, the fact that it looks so similar to the last one. Um, overall, the graphics are great, though. It looks just like the show, as, uh, as did the last one, and it all the characters interact the voices are exactly what you want the, just, it's a beautiful game um they've changed the layout a little bit they had the shit sh uh shit pa town i played the historic one uh they added that to the game and the structure of that and the whole area around kenny's house based on the show um i'm considering myself more of a a big south park fan i haven't followed the last sh season and a half heavily but i'm mostly caught up on it i know I go about pc principal and all that kind of stuff that member berries and those i've seen most of those episodes so i'm mostly caught up but um some of the jokes probably didn't land because of that but that's here or there that's some of the story stuff but i mean graphically yeah there's not much else to say besides it's a very good looking game for what it's trying to do it hits on exactly what it's trying to do which is looking just like the show and i commend them for that and doing it again um the only thing i would say is i had some hiccups in the graphics uh, mainly on the gameplay um, there, I'll get to one big bug later I had, but it's it, even when I'm recording today, it locked up a little bit in between characters' turns. You get a little bit of delay, and it's like, I'm like, is it gonna freeze? Is it gonna lock up? Am I gonna have to go back last back to the last checkpoint, kind of thing? Because it kind of freezes for a good thirty seconds sometimes. Um, I'm not sure if that's a graphical thing or just the actual new grid mechanic they ran for the gameplay, but. Uh, that's one thing I did kind of notice. I can not know if it's graphic hiccup or gameplay hiccup, but still something that's going on. Um, at this, at that, I'll just move into the gameplay. The gameplay, um, the gameplay's combat has changed a bit this time around. That's the probably the most no noticeable difference of this game is the gameplay. Instead of being the old Paper Mario or Mario RPG style RPG where it's uh, turn based, timing based, where your attacks you kind of do like two or three attacks and you have a super and whatnot. That's that was the gameplay last time. This time. It's a little more uh, kind of Final Fantasy Tactics, Fire Emblem style grid where you're moving around. There's different status effects, different uh, attacks. You can customize your attacks. There's actually uh, a bunch of different classes. Which are so the character classes are as follows. Speaster, Blaster, Brutalist, Elementalist, Cyborg, Psychic, Gadgeteer, Assassin, Plant Master, and Martial Artist. So you get those, I believe, in those orders. You get the three to start off, then the next three, and then the next three, and then the martial artist is at the very end. Uh, as the game goes on, you unlock more. You can kind of dual class and triple class and whatnot. Um, and at the end, you get the eventually get the ability to kind of play around with whatever you want, uh, which is nice. It's nice to be able to, like, you kind of feel like you have the... It destroys the replayability of the game by doing that, but at the same time, I... It leaves it open for everyone to enjoy and play, try to play around different classes. At the end, I did find the abilities I liked a lot and used those. Um, I actually, the ones I ended up using at the end, I kind of were using most of the game. I only swapped out like one of them, and that was like, I, like the th when I got the third level, I started using a lot more of those. Uh, but I started with the Brutalist. I actually let Nicole, uh, my wife, choose my first class. I wanted her to watch me play a little bit, and she fell off because she's not that big in gaming. And it gets kind of, and if you don't have like story beats all the time, it's kind of hard to keep her engaged with that, with, at least with this game. But uh, the different classes were nice. I think it had me hard to balance. I feel like certain abilities were definitely overpowered compared to others. Uh, in particular, the Plant Master one uh, is Root Strike, where it's a 3 by 3 uh area of effect that has these branches coming out of the ground and causes bleed damage to everyone that hits hit by it and knocks them back and knock them back into other enemies too so it does a ton of damage big oe and the bleed effect is very very big um it's one of the few bleed abilities that i that i really used and i thought it was very useful as well as the uh the freeze one you can go to the elementalist um that was very useful as well uh, there's a few supers in there that uh, helped me a lot in the final boss uh boss areas so otherwise i really wouldn't have done super great there but yeah the grid-based combat was very uh very interesting 
uh, kind of move around turn based. The turns were kind of at random, more or less. You didn't. It wasn't my turn, their turn, my turn, their turn. Kind of like Fire Emblem, if you will. It was kind of rotating in. Uh, and certain bosses would also kind of skew that even heavily, but I'm not going to get into that. It's a little spoilery. But you can kind of put control a little bit when you enter combat. You can get a combat advantage by doing attacking it first, like I believe you could in the last one, uh, using your uh, throwing farts and whatnot uh, to cause some status of effects before the game starts to give you also advantage. Um, those were uh, yeah, most useful in random encounters. Similar thing, you run into people in the level and you attack them, um, and then you start combat. Uh, the yeah, over, Overall, that stuff was was similar to the last one. Um, I think that's where this game lies as um, not standing out as much and not having the same impact. Um, a lot of people I've heard weren't, it was, I think I reviewed in the eights, um, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't think it reviewed as high or if people were it's as memorable as the last one just because the graphics are so similar. There's no jump. Like the games we have at South Park and just show games in general were very, it looks like it, but not really. Uh, it looks like the show, but not really. This is the first, uh, at least with the Sick of was the first time we had it. This looks like the show. This looks like the content I'm enjoying. Some of the why a lot of people like Ratchet and Clank is that looks just like a Pixar movie. That it, It's those kind of things that stand out and make a lasting impact. This game didn't have that transcendence from, oh, this looks great to, oh, this looks even better. It just, this looks more polished, but the same. Um, and in the gameplay, I had some issues, especially the, uh, the second to last boss battle. Uh, when well, I was talking about the turns in between, kind of holding for a second for a little too long sometimes, I actually had a character dead on the field. And then it went to his turn, even though he was dead. And he was like getting up and then falling down, getting up, falling down, getting up, falling down. And I'm like, why is this happening? And I can move him around and use his attacks. So he's my healer, fortunately for me. I moved around and was able to heal twice during one of the battles where I was probably going to lose. I tried this boss a few times. The, the end ramp up is pretty heavy. Having him be able to heal my guys and me eventually be able to revive him and use him and beat the boss afterwards, I probably still could have won, but it would have been very, very close. With that happening, I definitely won. Um, that was the main, I guess, the main catalyst of why I won. And, because I was actually missing uh, something. Um... Throughout the game, you get these different farts that uh, <laughs> that affect the game, especially in gameplay. You can do also in the world as well some little uh, puzzles you can do. But in the gameplay, you can reverse time and remove someone's turn more or less. Uh, but there's other ones. There's one I had late that helps heavily, and it's the only one you don't get through through the story. You get it by doing a side stuff that it's, you kind of discover as you grab some items in the game. Um, otherwise, you would have no idea about it. And I didn't know the last thing I had to do. Uh, I eventually looked up on a wiki later and was in that boss because I was getting stuck. And I'm like, oh, I can't go back and do this now. So I'm screwed. Um, but I was able to, again, persevere with that one little glitch and whatnot and beat the second to last boss. And then the last boss was, again, a little anticlimactic. But it was, it was a fun story beat, but it wasn't like a difficult fight. Um, throughout the game, there's different summons as well just like the last game not as cool not as funny as mr slaves but yeah kyle's dad uh jimbo and ned and uh moses there's uh, also classy the one uh, pr uh prostitute or um uh stripper i should say in the game uh she's a story character as on point as well uh you unlock most of us through the story that some of you have to kind of go do things um really quick um i think well, i think classy you get through the story and uh, i think moses as well but you kind of, uh, the other two you get through writing side stuff. And they're fine. Uh, I feel like they didn't do as much as the, the ones in the last game. I feel like they weren't as impactful. Uh, like, I feel like my plant, ma plant Mancer attack was way more effective than any other special, besides Moses being able to, he, Moses heals everyone. Um, that's probably the most useful one. Um, otherwise, the other ones didn't seem to have a huge effect on the game. But they were there. And they were, it was a fun little story to be finding Kyle's dad. Um, but yeah, I'll get. Um, which kind of his uh, special kind of or his something kind of revolves around the story. Um, the story of this game is mostly about uh, cheesing. If you ever seen those, this episode uh, from seasons past uh, where the uh, cat, <laughs> pretty much cat spray in your face would cause you to get drugged more or less and trip out. Um, people are stealing the cats in the town and trying to dispense this drug and bringing it back again. Uh, you don't know who it is. Eventually, you're thinking you find out. And I'm not I'm not going to try to kill too much of it. But that's the main story. Um, the main gist of it. 
Um, as well as that, there's the story between you with the Kuna friends going against the Freedom Pals, um, which is fine. I think it's funny. They kind of go off the whole movie thing. They've have you seen any of the uh, the the trailers and modifiers this game? They talk about oh the the story uh, the the movie tie-ins and whatnot for them and creating their franchise and whatnot. I think it's fun. It's 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 fine. Um, there's some funny beats in there as well. The banter back between back in between the guys and typical stuff that uh, guys like Cartman and whatnot will do. Um, in this game, instead of uh, was I forget what the Facebook variant they had in the last one, but now they have Instagram, which is a fun little addition to the trying to get pictures with people, trying to get selfies with everyone, to lock them to adding them as friends, and it's cool stuff like that. Um, overall, yeah, it's fine. Uh, the big bad at the end, I think the payoff for him wasn't super great. They the story kind of builds to a good point. I like where they're going with it, and then they kind of jump around a lot. They're just a I just feel like the the payoff wasn't great at the end. It was a fun little ending at the very end, but like the build up to that point wasn't rewarding enough. Um, I just feel like it, there was some good parts, but it, it just didn't come together. There were some things that I wish were you stayed in one spot a little longer because I felt like it was kind of just attacking just to extend the game a little longer, and I don't think it was needed. Um, I feel like it would been a little more interesting otherwise. I had some funny little jokes here, but nothing that really stuck with me. Some characters I thought were missing from this, especially from the uh, the actual show, if you watch the superhero arc of the actual show, you have, I mean, you have Mysterion in this, uh, the Coon, um, uh, Professor Chaos through Butters, and as much other, and most of these are eventually playable with you as well and whatnot. But there was one that they missed from the, from the show that wasn't in this one, and I thought it was kind of uh, was Mintberry Crunch because they actually showed him a lot of the promotional stuff for uh, for the game, and then all of a sudden he just wasn't there. Uh, hopefully, maybe he'll be DLC. They do have a uh, the bus stop. Um, is they show the DLC bus stop wherever it is. So I'm assuming they'll have extra content. I'm not sure I'll pick it up, but uh, the admin a story like a story arc from Mintberry Crunch would be kind of funny. Um, also, like Mr. Garrison, some that was one of the other big uh, character that I don't remember being in the game, and I thought it'd be kind of funny to have him. He his banter with Carbon is usually very good in the show, um, and just the guy, the boys in general. And I feel like he was a missed uh, character for the story, just to add a fun little flavor. Otherwise, like, it's the same voice is kind of uh, slightly different, and he's a very unique voice, and I kind of missed that. There was some fun stuff they did with uh, some of the side stuff, like building your character up. Um, like you go meet PC Principal, and he like decides your ethnicity, and then you go to. Uh, uh, Mr. Mackey, and you find out you like you decide your gender and whatnot. There's some fun banter with that. There's some also some, one of the side stories. There's not as many as I wanted there to be, uh, but the one I enjoyed the most was the one with Tweak and Craig. Uh, if you follow the show at all, they are um, were written into a written in by a bunch of Asian girls or girls at the school uh, as Yahweh uh, art, and they become a gay couple um and it's their relationship kind of going through some stuff and it's kind of funny um going through that arc um i thought eventually the their super actually change their ultimate ability kind of changes and i thought it's just really funny um what they did with it so um that's one thing i did like about the story was the, the even though it was light the side stories were kind of enjoyable for the most part the game does have some light uh crafting elements actually this one and with those elements you can build new costumes which don't affect anything really you can get uh, new consumables and you can also build new art uh, artifacts the artifacts are used as your your character uh different slots as you level up you get more slots that up your might and change your ability like their knockback damage or your uh, ally health your regeneration and stuff like that um those affect those different stats. Um, also, all your characters are based around different uh, different stats, uh, their abilities. There's the brutal sort of physical combat. The psychics are, I believe, uh, like I forget they're called the OK is like the OK symbol. There's the mind one, um, speed, health, and whatnot. And there's all with that you can also change your um, like your, I guess probably they call it, your like DNA more or less of how you balance that. You can have your character have really strong brutal attacks but really low health and or more more mobile but less in other things and you kind of like play around with those stats at the end you get some ones that are a little more uh boosting as opposed to uh balancing 
and playing that act. But uh, I thought it was a really kind of cool addition. You can kind of play around depending on how you want your play style and how your party was built up. You could play with those and pretty much boost your character's abilities or build your team around a certain comp. Um, I like that little addition as well on top of the grid-based combat. And it was it, it added a little depth to it um, besides the typical. The crafting could have been a little more elaborate. It was just more or less, oh, upgrade new one, new one, new one. As you level up, you get new ones. And it was... It wasn't really deep, but it was it was there. It's, and I added some RPG elements to this uh, tactical RPG. So yeah, I'd like to thank you for watching. Um, that's pretty much all I really have for my review. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll like and subscribe below again. Um, overall, again, this game is good, not great. I would say so again. The, the Metacritic is pretty accurate with where I would put it. Um, if I were to give it a number, but it's the game looks beautiful just like the last one did it doesn't revolutionize anything the story is not as good as the last one but still enjoyable if you're a south park fan i definitely recommend it if you're a casual south park fan even still i'd i definitely leave it a look if you don't care about south park probably not gonna love this game the gameplay isn't deep enough uh, overall to really warrant it's fun it's a good game it's good gameplay but you're not gonna care about it as much if you don't care about the lore or the story of south park um and overall like i said it's still a good game uh definitely recommend it for those people i just listed uh again thank you for watching see you in the next one thank you